No, because I've been dealing with it for 20 Council, years. it's time to have a rise for May 22nd, 2017, 8 p.m. City Council. Please stand and salute the flag. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Council, it's just a couple pieces of information before we go into the agenda tonight. I did speak to uh, Mark Lindy of uh, Brockton uh, Cable Access. Unfortunately, they're having some issues. Uh, so this is being taped. It will not be live tonight, but it will be taped. Uh, I did reiterate to Mr. Lindy that we do have the upcoming budget hearings, and I would expect that those would be live. Uh, and he's going to do his, uh, his due diligence to try to make that a reality. Uh, another piece of information, Council, is because the Finance Committee of last Monday the 15th was canceled. Um, I am scheduling one for next Tuesday, Monday being the holiday. Uh, Tuesday the 30th of May here in the chamber, 7 p.m. We'll have a finance committee meeting. It will be the agenda from the 15th and the items that are referred this evening. So it will be a pretty lengthy agenda that night. Mm -hmm. But again, it's next Tuesday night, if you could put that in your calendars. With that being said, um, Councilor Beauregard. Yes, if I could have a moment of personal privilege, Absolutely. Mr. President. Yes, okay. Councilor. I have a citation here for someone that's been involved with the project, you know, his own time, his own funds, et cetera, for 10 years now. And uh, his name is uh, Richie Hand, so I'd like him to come up here, present this. We have a lot of great people in the city, do a whole lot of great things, but uh, Richard Hand came along and wanted to teach kids about coins, and that got them learning about math and history and geography. And the amazing thing is, uh, kids came along, but a whole lot of adults did. And he started this at the West Branch, and now it's at the Broad to Main Library, and he has over 100 people show up every year. So um, this is a citation from uh, the, the city councilors um, for your recognition for 10 years of successful National Coin Week events, teaching young and old history, geography, and mathematics through coins and paper and money. And be it further known that the City Council extends best wishes for continued success, that the citation be duly signed by the President of the Council and attested to and copy thereof transmitted to the Clerk of the Council. So anyway, can't thank you enough. Thank you. Thank you. Um, he has plans already for next year, already reserved the room, etc. But, you know, people need to realize that co people come from different parts of New England to see this event. And uh, it's, it's been unbelievable, the turnaround, the speakers, and uh, the periodicals go out to even Canada, and people recognize uh, what goes on here in Broughton. So, anyway, kudos to Thank that. You. Thanks again. Thank you. Mr. Han, thank you. And also, uh, people may not know you're, you're uh, a distinguished veteran and also mm -hmm. a retired iron worker. So thank you for all that you do for the city of Brockton. Thank you, as well. City Council President. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Mr. Clerk, if we could go into agenda item number one, please. The acceptance of the minutes of the May 8th, 2017 Council meeting. Accepted and placed on file. Appointment of Marlene Amity of 27 Herod Ave, Brockton to the Council. Uh, Cultural Council for a six-year term. Refer to Finance Committee. Reappointment of David Lynch, 30 Quincy Street, Brockton, as a constable in the city of Brockton for a term of three years. Refer to Finance Committee. The appointment of Frederick McDermott, 976 Ash Street, Brockton, to the Board of Election Commissions to replace William Prebyshowskis for a four-year term. That two councils refer to Finance. We have a petition on behalf of the Joint Bingo Committee, congregations of Temple Beth Lamuna and Temple Beth Am, requesting the City Council approve to jointly conduct a weekly bingo game within the city on Wednesday nights at the Shaw Center. Council is all in favor of granting this petition. Please raise your hand. All opposed. Petition is hereby granted. Okay, good. Petition of AI Westgate Lanes LLC DBA Westgate Lanes for 13 billiard tables and 62 bowling alleys. License located at 65 Westgate Drive, Brockton. Time having arrived, I declare the hearing open. If there's anyone here in favor, please come forward to the podium and state your name. Good evening. Good evening, sir. My name is Francine Kaiser. I am the now going to be the manager of Westgate Lanes. Uh, we're in the process of the sale. Uh, it should be done by the end of June. Excellent. Wow. Uh, Harry Jr. Uh, said that he wishes he could have came, but they have a busy night there tonight, so he did not <laughs> come with me. Okay. Consul, any questions? Just Consul Cruz. Thank you. So the Manassians are selling the business to you? Yes, the Manassians. Uh, Harry Jr. is ready to retire. Uh, he's going to stay on with us part time. He's selling to me and my partner. Uh, we've had background since 03 in bowling. Everything's going to stay the same, the name, everything. 
just going to put some improvements into it, into the pub, and keep it running. That's all. Well, I hope you do as good a job running it as the Manassian family <laughs> has for all these many years, and yeah. they've been great neighbors to and great uh, members of the Brockton community. So uh, hopefully you'll, you'll good luck on it, but hopefully you'll uh, be as good a neighbor and as good a uh, business owner as the Manassian family has. Absolutely. So. i got some big shoes to fill. <laughs> Thank you, Councilor. Any Thank other you. questions, Councilors? Anyone else here in favor? Anyone else here in favor? Third and final. Anyone here in favor? The part of the hearing is closed. Anyone here in opposition? Anyone in the chamber in opposition? Third and final. Anyone in opposition? Part of the hearing is closed. Uh, we're going to entertain a, uh, a motion now relative to if we're going to grant the petition. All in favor? All opposed? It carries. Petition is hereby granted. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck. Petition of Mass Electric Company and National Grid request for permission to install a new pole, number one, Falmouth Ave, in support of the new apartment building at 20 West Rosetta Street. Uh, time having arrived to declare the hearing open. If there's anyone here in favor relative to this matter, anyone here in favor? Anyone here from uh, Mass Electric, National Grid? Council, I'm going to take a motion. Maybe we can put this off a little bit later in the agenda. Anybody want to make so that moved. motion? So moved. Second. Motion made properly. Second. We're going to put that. We're just going to postpone it to the end of the agenda. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know if... if uh, make a motion on number eight also. Okay. Anyone here, before we open, anyone here from Second. Verizon? Verizon. None. No. Okay. okay. Council, there's a motion made for eight. Nine. Second. Nine, nine and ten. Nine, nine and ten as well, Council. Okay. No, it doesn't look like anybody from utilities. So okay. seven, eight, nine, ten. Motion's been made to postpone those to the end of the agenda. All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Council. Number 11. Excuse me, Mr. President. Council. A moment of clarification, if you don't mind. Why didn't we have a hearing on number five? Why do we go straight to motion to petition, to grant the petition? Well, Council, I, I, I discussed it with legal counsel. We don't need to since it's, it's already an existing um, matter. Uh, the, only, the only change in venue is the fact that Temple Bethel Mooner is no longer Temple Bethel Mooner, okay. city of Brockton. They, they uh, merged, well, tentatively merged with Randolph. That's not going to happen now. They're going to go to Easton, but they want to use the city of Brockton Shaw Center. Okay. So that was the only reason. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Thank you, Council. Uh, 7, 8, 9, uh, and 10 have been pushed off to the end. We're going to go on to 11. <laughs> Report of the Audits Committee for its meeting of May 9th, 2017. Except in place to the file. Communication from the Treasurer Collector requesting the transfer of $75,000 from the Treasurer's debt interest short term notes to Treasurer's Medicare tax. This transfer is necessary to cover the expected shortfalls due to budget cuts and unanticipated overtime through the remainder of the fiscal year. Except in place to the file. The Mayor recommending the same. Except in place to the file. CFO relative to the same. Except in place to the file. Communication for the Director of Animal Controls requested that a donation be accepted by the Council to help animals and their owners within the City of Brockton from Jeffrey J. Donahue, Jr. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the Mayor recommending the same. That too is accepted and placed on file. from the CFO relative to the same. Also accepted and placed on file. Communication from the DPW Commissioner mm -hmm. authorizing Onyx Development Group, LLC, DBA, Onyx Renewable Partners, LP, Onyx to act as Brockton's agent to correspond and coordinate with National Grid on matters related to its connections, application, and study of the solar project located at the Thatcher Street landfill as permitted in Mass State standardized interconnection requirements. That's accepted and placed on file. Communication from the mayor recommending the same. Also accepted and placed on file. Communication from the DPW commissioner requested that the city council transfers $26,000 into the sewer overtime in order to cover the projected overtime expenses and emergencies for the remainder of the year. The sewer division would like to transfer $17,000 from separation costs and $9,000 from CDL stipend to sewer personnel services overtime. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the mayor recommending the same. That too is accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the mayor recommending the reestablishment of a revolving fund for fiscal 2018 from the cash receipts from Comcast and such expenditures not to exceed $750,000. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. We have communication from the assistant city auditor certifying that the balance of the ambulance receipts reserved <laughs> for appropriation as of May 15, 2017 is $592,801.95. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the chief of the fire department requesting a transfer of $21,299.30 from ambulance receipts to fire department, other contract services in order 
to dispatch fire <coughs> EMS responders from the fire station and contracted ambulance sites. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the mayor recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the director of animal controls requesting $4,000 to be transferred from full-time salaries into overtime to cover overtime expenditures through the remainder of the fiscal year. As of this date, only $1,947.15 remains in the line item. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the mayor recommending the same. Council is accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. That too is accepted and placed on file. Communication from the chief of police requesting the following transfer of $250,000 be approved for police department fiscal 17 budget from personal services other than overtime to police personal services overtime. The transfer is necessary to cover overtime expenditures as a result of vacancies. This appropriation comes from the surplus and the personnel service account due to vacancies. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the mayor recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. That too is accepted and placed on file. Communication from the building department requested reauthorization of the revolving funds for the fiscal 18 vacant and abandoned buildings account. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the mayor recommending the same. Also accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. That too, accepted and placed on file. Communication from the executive director of the Brockton Park Authority requesting reauthorization of the Parking Authority revolving fund to receive revenues from parking violation fines up to and including the amount of $250,000. Said funds to be expended by the Parking Authority to pay expenses of parking regulation enforcement <coughs> in fiscal year 2018. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO, or from the mayor recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the chairman of the Board of Assessors stating that the estimated taxes for Trinity Brockton Map ID 109-009 property upon the completion of phase two would be $192,500. The estimated taxes are based upon 111 residential apartment units being constructed with 65 of the units being market rate units and 46 affordable rate units. The estimated taxes are based upon the current fiscal 2017 assessment of 50 Center Street, Unit A and 50 Center Street, Unit B. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the mayor recommending that the city council adopt a three-part loan and appropriation for $2 million. As, assessed, as suggested by the city's bond council at Lock Lord LLP in order to provide the financing for the city's share of the cost to develop a new parking garage and make street and traffic improvements within the development district approved by the city council. Said project being undertaken with the participation of the Commonwealth, Trinity Financial, and the Brockton Redevelopment Authority. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO in accordance with Section 5 of Chapter 324 of the Acts of 1990, certifying the appropriation of and borrowing authority for $2 million for the purpose of paying the city's share of the cost of developing a new parking garage and street traffic improvements in a development district. In association with the Commonwealth, the Brockton Redevelopment Authority, and Trinity Financial. The expected annual increase in property tax revenue to the district from the project is $192,500, greater than the anticipated debt services per year, as indicated by the Chairman of the Board of Assessors on March 9, 2017. Accepted and placed on file. We have an ordinance of <clears throat> proving the extension of existing cemetery land to be dedicated to cemetery use located at East Street and Thatcher Street, pursuant to Mass General Laws 114, Section 34. Be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Brockton as follows. The land between East Street and Thatcher Street, including the existing cemetery of the Poor Sisters of Jesus Crucified and the Sorrowful Mothers, that is favorable as amended, and that is an order. And the question now is on the amendment to uh, make it an order. All in favor of the amendment? Opposed? And with that being an order, we are going to act on that this evening. Would the clerk please call the roll? Yes. 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 The order is adopted. An audit amending Chapter 2 of the revised ordinances of the City of Brockton be ordained by the City Council of the City of Brockton as follows. Article 5, Department, Division 7, Department of Personnel, is hereby amended by adding certain requirements relative to hiring and promotions. 
That recommendation is favorable as amended. Councilors, the questions on the amendment. All in favor of the amendment? All opposed, the amendment carries. Questions on passage to a third reading as amended by a hand vote. Third reading as amended? Opposed? Carries. Third reading as amended. An ordinance amending chapter eight of the revised ordinances of the city of Brockton be ordained by the city council of the city of Brockton as follows. Chapter eight, garbage and trash is hereby amended as follows. Section eight dash three, part one definitions, favorable as amended. Constance, questions on the amendments. All in favor of the amendments? Mm -hmm. All opposed? Questions on passage to a third reading as amended by a hand vote. All in favor of third reading as amended? Opposed? Carries. Third reading as amended. An ordinance amending chapter two of the revised ordinances, section 11 211, hereby amended by adding a limit on the number of licenses. Favorable <coughs> recommendation. Is there an amendment on that, Mr. Clark? Uh, yes, there, there is. Council's questions on the amendment. All in favor of the amendment? All opposed? Questions on passage to third reading as amended? Opposed? It's passed to a third reading as amended. Order that the sum of $2 million appropriated to pay costs for developing a parking garage and for making street traffic improvements within the development district approved by the city and being undertaken in conjunction with Trinity Finance <coughs> that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer with the approval of the mayor is authorized to borrow a set amount under and pursuant to Mass General Law <coughs> Chapter 40Q, the District Improvement Finance and Statute, Mass General Laws Chapter 44, and or any other enabling authority and to issue bonds or notes of the city, therefore, that such bonds or notes shall be general obligations of the city, although such bonds or notes shall be payable in the first instance from property tax revenue expected to be derived from the new development with the new development system, uh, district. The amount authorized to be borrowed pursuant to this order shall be expended in addition to all amounts received by the city from the Commonwealth of Mass and from Trinity Financial to pay cost of the project. It's referred to Finance Committee. Ordered <clears throat> any premium received by the city upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this order, <clears throat> lest any such premium applied to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds or notes, may apply, be applied to the payment of costs approved by this order in accordance with Chapter 44, Section 20 of the General Laws, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. <coughs> Refer to Finance Committee. Order that the City Treasurer is authorized to file an application with the Commonwealth of Mass Municipal Finance Oversight Board to qualify under Chapter 44A of the General Laws any and all bonds or notes of the City authorized by this vote and to provide such information and execute such documents as the Municipal Finance Oversight Board of the Commonwealth of Mass may require. Referred to Finance Committee. Order that pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 53E, one half, City Council authorizes the reestablishment of a revolving fund for fiscal year 2018 for the reauthorization of the Parking Authority revolving fund to receive revenues from parking violation fines up to and including the amount of $250,000. Referred to Finance Committee. And pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 53E, one half, City Council authorizes the reestablishment of a revolving fund for fiscal 2018 from the cash receipts from Comcast, such expenditures not to exceed $750,000. Referred to the Committee on Finance. Audit that the, city, the Brockton City Council act on behalf of the City of Brockton does hereby accept a grant and permanent easement for electrical equipment for National Grid, a mass corporation which is a place of business in Waltham, Mass, which is located on the southwesterly side of Thatcher Street to originate from Paul P42, which is located at the Nautilus Sound of Thatcher Street. Now that was in her. Council, that's going to be referred to the Finance Committee and Planning. President. Yes, Council, I'm sorry. Uh, Council Stanetsky. Thank you very much. Due to uh, the fact that the solar mountain is almost done, 90% done, this is a hookup to interconnect to get the data from that mountain that's going into the Edison. Uh, I would like to have this go tonight under suspension of the rules so that they can move forward and get that done right away. Second. Motion made, properly seconded to act on 53 tonight under suspension of the rules. All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries. We're going to act on the suspension of the rules. Um, question comes before us now by a roll call vote. Yes. 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 
Order is hereby ordained. Order of the city hereby accepts as a grant and gift from Jeffrey J. Donahue, Jr. of four dog houses pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 53A, one half, to be donated to four residents of the city as deemed necessary by the Brockton Animal Control Department. The mayor is authorized to execute any and all documents necessary to effectuate such gift. Uh, let's refer to the Finance Committee, Councilor. Mr. Councilor. I'd like to move suspension of the rules on this so that they can uh, get uh, Actually, Councilor, the gentleman, the, the, the gentleman wanted to come here next week, the young boy that did this. I spoke to Mr. DeCellis. He'd like to come here. It's a pretty big thing to him. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you, you Councilor. <laughs> it is referred to Finance Committee, Councilor 54. Order that pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 44, Section 53E and one half, City Council authorizes the reestablishment of a revolving fund for fiscal 2018 for the sole purpose of funding the creation and maintenance of the abandoned building registry, as well as the closing and boarding up of vacant and abandoned buildings, provided that no more than $250,000 may be so expended for the fund during fiscal 2018. For the Finance Committee. We have an appropriation of $21,299.30 from ambulance receipts, the fire department, other <coughs> contract services, in order to dispatch fire and EMS responders from the fire station and contracted ambulance sites. For the Finance Committee. We have an appropriation of $75,000 from the Treasurer's debt interest short term notes to Treasurer's Medicare tax in order to cover the expected shortfall due to budget cuts and unanticipated overtime for the remainder of the fiscal year. That too is referred to Finance Committee. We have an appropriation of $26,000 from DPW sewer separation costs, $17,000. DPW sewer DD, uh, CDL stipend, $9,000. To the Department of Double Port, <laughs> strike that, to, to the DPW sewer overtime in order to cover the projected overtime expenses and emergencies for the remainder of the year. Councilor Yaneri. Thank you, Mr. President. At this time, Mr. President, I'd like to move that we suspend the rules and act on this this evening. I think time of his uh, essence and we're going into summer session. Anyone has any questions, the DPW commissioner is here, but I'd like to make that. Second. Motion, motion is on the motion, Council Bonds? Uh, yes, I guess so. I, I just have a question for uh, Mr. Rowley. <coughs> well, there's a motion. It's been properly seconded to act on this under suspension of the rules. All in favor? All opposed? We're going to act on it. Mr. Commissioner, if you could come forward. Good evening. How are you, Larry? Good, thank you. Good Thanks for being Councilors. here tonight. Council Bonds. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Rowley. So I, I just have a question. So Sorry. the funding will go to the CDL stipend. Is that for a particular person or just for the department for licenses or it, how that is, is that? That's for all the personnel that has their CDLs. Okay. And how many, how many folks is that? Well, <clears throat> out of the sewer department, it's probably roughly 25. Okay. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Any other questions? Councilor Cruz. It just so I understand, this money is coming out of, this is extra money in your CDL stipend? Extra money, account. yes. It is and we're moving it to the overtime? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, Councilor Mr. Chairman. Yep, I'm sorry. Yeah, just one more. So is the license expiring or it, how is this just to it, renew? It, the CDL stipend, that's all contractual, Councilor. Okay. So we have to pay every individual that holds a CDL, we have to pay them. Okay, I, okay, I get it. A little extra money I could take from that line item, another line item, to put it into overtime. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you, I'm all set. Any thank other councilors have a question for Mr. Rowley? Seeing none, the appropriation now comes before us on a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, kindly read the roll. Yes. 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 Appropriation passes. An appropriation of $4,000 from animal control full-time salaries to animal control overtime in order to cover overtime expenditures through the remainder of the fiscal <coughs> year. That is referred to Finance Committee, yeah, Councils. Council. Suspension of the rules so we may act on this tonight. On Second. 59? Uh, yes, on 59 for animal control. Okay. Second. I Second. Withdraw my, I withdraw my referral to finance. Motion on the floor. Act on the suspension of rules is properly seconded. All in favor? I'll oppose. Uh, it's going to pass. We're going to take a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, if you could kindly read the roll. Azak. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Beauregard. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Ionary. Yes. Farwell. Yes. Lally. Yes. Monahan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Sedinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Appropriation hereby passes, councils. An appropriation of $250,000 from personal services other than overtime 
the police personal services overtime in order to cover overtime expenditures. This appropriation comes from surplus and a personal service account due to vacancies. Council Stadinsky. Mr. President, due to the late time of the fiscal year, uh, the amount of money that's been spent and the fact that this is a, within the budget at the police department. I'd like to act on the suspension of rules. Chief Crowley is here. Second. Second. Uh, there's a motion on the floor, a properly second act on the suspension, uh, an act on it tonight. All in favor? All opposed? Uh, motion carries. And the chief is here. Chief, if you could come forward, please. Good evening, Chief. How are you? Good evening, Council. Council, is any questions for Chief Crowley? Council Monahan. Yes, good evening, Chief Crowley. Um, is there a chance that we could get some uh, walking beats back downtown if we approve this tonight? I believe so, yes. Um, I can't guarantee after July 1st, but this money will get us some walking beats prior to July 1st. So when would they, when would they be starting? Um, if it passes tonight, I can speak with Lieutenant Barry tomorrow and set it up for uh, as soon as they're available. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Councilor Farwell. Yes, I'm not going to oppose this tonight, Councilors, but I do want to go through just a quick summary of where we are with overtime for FY 2017. As you may remember, we reduced the overtime appropriation by $250,000. That left $770,552 remaining. The Police Public Safety Initiative had $244,600. We had $75,500 for licensing enforcement overtime. Subsequently, we approved $150,000 on January 9th from the Stabilization Fund, and we received an Executive Office of Public Safety grant in the amount of $100,000, which totals $1,340,652. With this $250,000 tonight, we will have appropriated $1,590,652. Now, that does not include overtime that may have come from the Shannon grant and another EOPS 911 grant. Uh, and when we received those orders, it was mentioned specifically that some of those funds, I don't know how much, but some of those funds would go to overtime. So I guess my point is, having come from the police department, uh, we need to have a healthy discussion during the budget process about police overtime. Um, we have a great department. You know I have great affection for them. Uh, I remember when Chief Crowley came in the job, I had been there a few years. Something needs to change. We, we cannot continue to appropriate this kind of money for overtime without looking at other options. For example, hiring more people. And I know at some point Mr. Condon will say, well, it's cheaper to have overtime than it is to hire more people. The problem is a tired officer is an officer at risk. It is a very complex job now out in the streets of Brockton. And I don't want someone to be working 20 hours. They went to court for a few hours, then they came in from 4 to 12, and then depending upon their, their seniority, they're held over on the midnight to 8 shift. I don't want something to happen to an officer. So uh, enough for tonight, but I hope my colleagues will be fully prepared to ask some real probing questions during the FY 2018 budget process because this issue, I really think, needs a thorough vetting before the City Council. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Ianeri. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, and Chief, I, I just want to, I'm going to just ditto everything that the uh, Councilor Lodge just said, because I, I totally believe that uh, uh, we need to take a hard, hard look at it, what we're doing and how we're, how we're spending the monies and how we're spending overtime in that department and what we need to do to, to progress in a, in a different type of way. I, I do want to just pick up on the heels of my um, Council from what to um, Council Monahan in regards to having walking uh, patrols back and and I'm going to put out that I want walking patrols back in Campello because when I ask that question the mayor always says well you keep taking my overtime away well I'm giving it to you now I'm asking for it and and I and I mean that wholeheartedly and I also want to make sure the traffic patrols are out there doing what they should be doing as well and I hear they haven't been so uh, there's a little work we've got to do here. I'll, I'm going to stand and stand tall and, and give you this 
before you this evening, but in, in essence, I, I feel the same way. We definitely got to start to take a different different look in how we uh, how we get through and, and what we have to do to this this department in, in regards to overtime. But you have my support with it, but I want your support on those other items as well. I Thank you, that. Chief. Thank you, Mr. President. Any other questions for the Chief? Yeah. Chief, I just want to say, uh, you know, I respect what you do. Um, I know that under this administration, there's been many requests for overtime. In fact, there was a request made that we granted, and you weren't the chief, it was a different individual relative to putting a code enforcement officer back on the street. Mm -hmm. And a promise was made, and it didn't get fulfilled. Um, so again, you come here as the chief, and we respect you, but we are really trying to say we'd like to see some walking beats. And I, you, you, I understand. Uh, financially, your hands are restrained at some time, but we really need to work together in a collaborative approach. Yes. Thank you, Chief. Councilor Stanisky. You might ask a question. But I know I don't do it. By all means, right. Councilor. Chief. Former Police Chief Stadensky, go ahead. Is, is overtime the only way we can have a beat officer downtown, et cetera? Well, I mean, it's, it's paid through overtime. Um, yeah. If we had adequate staffing, we could put somebody down there, or assign them. But okay. Can, can you tell, tell me what's causing the, the staffing problem? You're up to about 180 officers. Let's, let's subtract 10 for Indian on duty. So let's make it 170. I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm kind of miffed with that. It started out um, beginning of July due to vacation times and an exam year. Many people took time off. Later, as early in July, throughout the country, police officers became targets. As a result of that, we added four additional patrolmen to every shift so we could guarantee two responders to every call to see what was going on there, if they weren't needed to leave, but officer safety was paramount, and that came at a cost. No, that's understood. No problem there. I mean, the big thing is, is management. Right through you, you've got your captains. You've got your lieutenants. Uh, do you have a bureau? Is, is there a bureau for the patrol division? A bureau head? Operations bureau. Who, who's, who's the bureau head? Captain Williamson. Okay. Who's the bureau head for the administrative side? Captain Hallisey. Okay. The other captains, how have you got them assigned, if I can ask? Captain DeBerry is the traffic commissioner. Captain um, Gomes is the commanding officer of the day shift. Captain Sago is currently um, injured on duty pending retirement. And Captain McCabe is ETDs and restraining orders. All right, well, I, I, you're appreciated. You're appreciative of me. I haven't bothered you with any calls, uh, but there are some, some items I'd like to see cleaned up, and I'll explain that to you in private. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you Council. Council Beauregard. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, thank you, Chief, for being here this, tonight. Um, I have uh, two questions. I find, you know, you're asking for the overtime, and I've called repeatedly about concerns because, again, like many of my colleagues, we're looking forward to having more strong um, code enforcement. And I have a couple of officers that have been really great to me, and yet if I call and they're not there, there's never someone saying, can I assist you? And you know, I mean, I had to make seven phone calls before I finally got the officer that I wished to speak to. Fortunately, that officer came through with a great report that I had to bring to the law department. But my other concern is more than once we've asked, um, once here in city council we asked for the crime analyst and instead we had Captain Hallisey. I'm hoping you still have the crime analyst. This young woman really impressed me. She would be on the staff for what, over a year now? She just, yes. <coughs> and then we were hoping I'm involved with the Downtown Broughton Association because Downtown Broughton is Ward 2 and Ward 5 and we're trying to get businesses downtown and there's more residents coming downtown and many individuals expect an interest in hearing from the crime analyst and yet at a last meeting that we were hoping to have her come we were told at the last minute she was unavailable we'd, we'd really like to hear from this individual and her analyst you know and results on uh, what she's seen and how we can go forward with you know, again, seeing where the money can be spent with more, just like my colleagues, I want to see more foot patrols. 
And, uh, you know, one of actually your offices was surprised that I was walking from one end of Ward 5 to the other. And, I mean, I feel safe. But I believe that people feel better when they see, whether it's a motorcycle cop, a bicycle cop, or an individual, you know, police officer walking and communicating. I've heard through other, in, you know, reports that in other communities that that makes crime go down because people feel more secure, there's more interaction, and it seems, I guess, when there's more neighborly interaction, there's less crime. So I'm hoping that, um, like my colleagues expressed this evening, that we're going to see a more, um, how would I say it, involved um, future with the um, police in the, in the city. Thank you. Okay. Council, thank, thank you. you. Council Rodriguez, followed by Councilor Bonds. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. President, actually. Uh, Chief, welcome. Good evening. Um, I just want to make sure that the message doesn't leave this chamber um, because we're questioning the issues of overtime. Uh, we want to make sure that it doesn't get it doesn't get reflected on the work that the men and women of the Brockton P, you know, PD actually does on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, it's our job and function on this body to question things because when we leave here, we get bombarded with phone calls. And I believe what Councillor uh, Fowell was doing in terms of adding all the overtime expenditure, I think he said 1,000 something something, but I think he meant to say 1 million yeah. something something. Um, we have spent over a million dollars in police overtime in this city. Over a million dollars. Uh, I'm not against police overtime because there's in instances where you do need overtime but we got to do something. I mean, over a million dollars. I mean, last year, you asked for a few, and you got some. You got basically everything you asked for, plus. And here you are again with about a, a little over a month left asking for some more. we got to be a little more, a, a little more uh, frugal in the city, in the sense, to be able to. I mean, we're running into issues where we're closing classrooms because we can't afford to pay teachers, we, we're closing schools because we can't afford to make ends meet, but yet for some odd reason it seems that we find monies to spend on over a million dollars in police overtime. Not again, not that they don't deserve the, what they get paid, but I think we need to be a little more, a little smarter about doing things. And I can't imagine that a million plus dollars we couldn't turn around and maybe perhaps cut half of what we're spending and put that into more boots on the ground because I, I agree with Council Fowell in terms of, and I know some folks who are in the police department, some of them are dead tired in a sense because of what the, the hours that they're forced to work and that cannot make our communities any safer. So I think, and I agree with them that we know we need to seriously sit down. I don't know if, it, if it's to put together a commission to look into this, into this thing, but we need to seriously get get hold of this overtime stuff because it's out of control. It's out of control and it's frightening the daylights out of a lot of our residents, ourselves, and, and some folks within this community, within this building itself. I mean, people are concerned about that. But I wanted to ask you if you know, how do we compare overtime-wise in terms of expenditures with the other communities? And I'm not talking about Boston or Worcester or Springfield, more like the New Bedfords, the Lawrences, the Lynns, and the communities that are of, of our size. How are they spending their overtime monies in comparison to Brockton? I don't have that answer. I try to look up their budgets and, and pick that out, but I don't. I don't have that available tonight. But is this a is this a common thing that these communities of a hundred thousand people or so spend about a million dollars in police overtime? I would guess yes. You'd guess yes. I know Lawrence's appropriation on the yeah, EOPS grant was eight hundred eighty thousand dollars. So, um, so my guess is they're in the million dollar range also. Well, let me ask you something. What can you do as a police chief to to somehow look at overtime? and basically look into controlling overtime spending? In the past, a lot of our overtime was generally detective work and investigations. This past year, we've seen it be patrol and covering shift shortages so we can put the adequate number of people on the road to keep everyone safe. Um, you know, more bodies is the answer, but that takes time. We're in the process now of hiring 15. We're doing background checks. And that'll stop the bleeding, but as we put on, people retire. So it's, 
seems like we're always chasing our tail, but we're moving forward. Uh, we're, we're going in a good direction. It just takes time to get there. You know, honestly, I don't, I don't mind, for instance, seeing the patrolmen, you know, the guys who have been on the job five, six, ten years or so patrolling the streets. But when you look at the police overtime spending, you've got a lot of brass in that overtime uh, area. And that's what kind of bothers a lot of people in the community because you look at when the newspapers comes out and prints out, a, 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 you know, the earners in the community and you see all this brass you know, making a ton of overtime money, and these aren't funds that are actually going for street patrolling. You know, so if it's actually, if you're seeing patrolmen patrolling, I think the community feels a little, a little more alleviated in the sense knowing that, yes, the overtime money is actually going onto the streets, where in fact, you're looking at captains, lieutenants, that aren't really in the street, but yet somehow, uh, it's a utilizing the, it's a, a great deal of the overtime money. It's a contractual issue for fair and equal distribution of overtime between the, the patrolmen and the superior officers. So, you, like, say if uh, on a, um, a 4 to 12 shift, for instance, a sergeant is going to create overtime, there's an opening. So a sergeant, lieutenant, and captain is eligible for that. And whoever's low hours is going to get it. And usually it's the captain who's the highest paid. And that's, that's, I mean, the contractual language needs to change. Mm. Well, how do we change it? Mm. Bargaining. Mm. Yeah, but who's, who's sitting around in the bargaining? You guys do. Right, we're doing that now. So it, doesn't that make sense to somehow look into that and say, hey, how can well, we yes, make this a little, more, a little more equitable for the community? Because, I mean, I hear the mayor saying the other day that we now have more police officers than we've had in quite some time. We're but yet to, some, yes. Huh? We're going to, yes. Yeah, but yet... We're spending also a lot more in OT than we did before. So it's not really kind of resolving the overtime issue uh, as well as it should. I agree. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank Mr. You, President. Um, just, just for point of information, the figure that uh, Council Fowell should have mentioned was $1,590,652, and that figure doesn't include the two grants. Council Bonds. Thank you, um, Mr. President. So um, just to kind of follow up on something that uh, Council Borgott said. So the crime analyst, I actually, I have my budget book from last year. So, and in here, I guess I put in here the report from the crime analyst at the time. Um, I believe this was back in June uh, 2016. Has there been another one since this? Another report? Yeah. Yes, sir. I, mean. I, I don't know what you have there. Well, when the, when the crime analyst came on, uh, we were given this report that kind of explains or gives a little dossier of, um, I guess, some of the crimes that were going on or some of the things that were happening. She does that real, daily. She does one of those every day. Real time. Okay. Real time. So I don't know if my other colleagues received any others since this, but I, I guess were there any others that we could have been privy to before now that we may be able to have to show some of the, or even have like a compare and contrast uh, report from last year to this year? You could ask her to, to do an overview of everything and just add up everything and give percentage of increases and decreases. I don't, I don't see exactly what you have there, but it, it looks like the daily bulletin. Yeah, I, I mean, this is what I got from, this is what I assume to have gotten from the crime analyst at the time when we had asked for, um, I guess, not evidence of the work that, that that person was doing, but just kind of what were the things were being um, studied or, or, you know, things that were in analysis. So I, I guess I'm asking, can we maybe get more of these, these kinds of reports? If they're daily intelligence reports, can we get more of them? Maybe once a quarter or at least? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's just there's sensitive information in there. Some of them have sensitive information. In yeah, this one, only. yeah, it's pretty sensitive. Council, why don't we respectfully, and you can redact the sensitive information, but why don't we request it monthly? Tomorrow. Okay, okay, monthly's okay, fine. Months. I can. I just didn't want to be too annoying on that. But okay, I respectfully, that'd be that'd be good. Have it once a month. Because mm -hmm. okay. we only meet as a city council. We meet twice a month, so that'd be great. Perfect. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. And then, so with that too, is the crime analyst paid out of overtime funds, or is that person paid out of um, full time? She's in the budget. And is a full time position. Okay, I, I don't know if I. I didn't really see that in here, but I just wanted to make to see if that person was paid in the overtime fund. Now, with regard to what Councilor Farrell put, um, put out, and I'm glad that he was able to get that information for the $1.59 million and some change. And going back, looking at the 
police overtime requested, it was only 1.1 million. The mayor requested 1 million and you know, 20,000 or so, but you received 750, correct? Yes. So this time, from, that, from that, year, that year to now, we've even gone over what you requested in the beginning of budget season, uh, season of last year by 400 and something thousand, almost a half a million dollars. Yes. Okay. So with, as Councillor Rodriguez said, with, uh, you know, less than a month to go, really, two, two weeks for the evaluation and, you know, some kind of, um, I, I guess, coming together and releasing of the funds, do you think that the department would be able to get over on maybe 100,000 or 150,000? Because I, I mean, I honestly, I in all good faith, and I'm not against the police, and I'm not against you know, folks not having overtime or whatever, whatever's going on. It, I just echo what my colleagues are saying. I just find it mind boggling that our city can go through almost a million and three quarters do dollars like that that's a lot of money some departments aren't even the whole departments aren't funded for that amount of money and that's just one budget item for one department in one city and it's a lot and with a whole with, with just a month to go to ask for another quarter of a million dollars I mean if, if we're looking at round numbers I mean we can make it cute and say two hundred fifty thousand dollars that's a quarter of a million dollars when more than 1.5 million has been spent already that's a lot, that's almost $2 million in one line item. That's a lot. And, and I, again, I think we really do need to vet this and kind of figure out, and like you said something about you know, the, the new uh, officers that are coming on, um, it is a way to kind of stop the bleeding. And that, that's a good way, that, I, I think that was a good way that you put that because this particular line item, the department is hemorrhaging money out of this line item. And we, this, there's gotta be a way to fix that and, and I think healthy, candid discussion on exactly where it's going, how it's being spent. Um, some of the, the, maybe even some of the culture in the department needs to change because in speaking with some of my police officer friends, some of them say that if they ask for time off, they don't think they're, gonna be, they're, they're not gonna get it, so they just call in sick and then that automatically generates like this overtime and all this other stuff. We, something's wrong there too. Something's wrong with that kind of thinking. Like I'm not gonna be able to get my time off even if I do it the right way and ask for it, so I'm just gonna take off. That's where this, that, that's what's happening here. And we're all feeling the brunt of it. So I guess I'm saying, is this something that you can maybe get over on for the next month with 100, maybe 150,000? No. Okay, all right. Um, can I make an amendment to reduce it to 150,000? If that happens, there'll be drastic reductions in service for the city. Um, but $250,000 in a month of services? A month of walking beats? Or, I mean, that, that's, I, 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 don't, I, just, I, I guess I just I don't understand. I can't anticipate where the future is going to bring me, and I won't have time to come back and get more if I need it. So I, I have to ask for what I'm asking for now. And I'm not, it's, again, it's a transfer of funds that are already there from salaries. I realize that the council feels that's the same sometimes, but it's money I have in the budget now. Okay. Council Lally, are you done, Council Bonds, for, for the moment? Well, apparently. You don't have to be if you don't want to be. No, no, I am. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, okay, sir. Okay, Council Lally. All right, thank you. Um, I, just want to, I just want to start by, you know, by thanking you and, uh, and your officers for the work that you do. It's not an easy job, um, especially this part. Um, I, I, did, I did just check. I'm not going to really touch too much on it. I did just check uh, online, according to the Lawrence Journal, uh, they don't have the 2007 uh, fiscal year 17 numbers up, but uh, in fiscal year 2016, they spent a little less than $1 million on overtime. Um, my two things that I, wanna, I wanted to bring up uh, were you know, I wanted to echo some of the counselors uh, had, you know, concerns about code enforcement and continuing, uh, continuing to make sure people stayed within the law and within the boundaries on, on that. Uh, I think that's very important for us to, us to continue and us to really double down on. Uh, and like Counselor uh, Ian Erie asked about, you know, uh, more walking beats in Campello, uh, I would like to echo that for Montello and 
you know, part of the village if possible, because that's, you know, that's an area that could, you know, uh, the people would really appreciate the extra presence. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Council Cruz, followed by Council Fowell. Thank you, Chief. Thanks for being here. Um, maybe I'm seeing this a little differently, but so this is $250,000 from your current personal services budget. Yes. That would be taken by if some of these officers that are being uh, vetted right now, I assume they'll be appointed and go to the academy soon. Yes. But that'll be into the next fiscal year, I assume. Yes. So this is $250,000 that if that whole process was going a little earlier and take, uh, moving faster, would be towards, towards those officers, let's say. Yes. $250,000, how many officers with benefits and, and equipment would that, be take, would that be for a year? Probably four? Four-ish. Four. And that $250,000 in overtime, the, those four uh, trained and ready and put on the job would not be able to handle all of what you'll use this overtime money for, I assume. That's correct. So it, 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 we use a big amount in the police and fire because we have less people and it, we use overtime to cover those, those, uh, those jobs. Correct? Yes. And in fact, I hear th at least four, and I agree with them, requests for walking beats. Th it's additional work. It's, it's adding people to the street, correct? Yes. And that money has to come from somewhere. And if we use most, of, if we were to take that million and a half that we've spent on overtime, be what do you think, uh, probably 17, 18 officers at, at entry level? In that neighborhood, yes. And that wouldn't, as full-time employees, do you think they would cover two-thirds of what you use for overtime, a half? Probably not. Probably not. So the, the overtime budgets that we use for police and fire are really very penny-wise uh, penny uh, spent. They're, they're very, you, we get a big value for that as opposed to adding people with benefits, retirement, the whole thing. And, of course, those... Those are entry-level prices we're talking about. As those officers are on the department, they uh, those numbers go up. Correct? Yes. So, I just it, it seems to me it's the right way to do it. To a point, you do get a point. And I agree with Council Fowell. I don't want anybody out there that's that's overworked. But uh, uh, do you feel that that's happening? We'll reach a point where that potentially could happen. Yes, and we have a lot of demands on our officers. Um, and as he said, they do a hard job. If you think an officer has spent too much time, is there a limit by 16 hours? 16 hours is the most they can spend uh, on a, in, a, in a day. Right. And Without a break. They'd have to take an eight-hour stop. Take an eight-hour break. So there is a, 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 and do you think that's too much? Or? I mean, if you're doing it every day, it's too much. But, um, you know, it's a job that needs to be done. So there is a tipping point of where... We need to look at, and you are, how many, how many officers are we looking at adding? 15. 15, and which we should bring us up to? 200. To 200, which would be the highest we've been in, in at least in, since I've been, been around. I mean, I, I think we haven't been over, but ask Chief Stadensky as a point of information. Back to prior 1989, we're at 200. Prior 89, that's, that's pretty good. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, President. Councils. Are there any other councils before we go to follow-ups? Any councils that didn't ask any questions? Council Fowell, follow up. Well, j just to close out, I think, unfortunately in politics, things get spun around 180 degrees away from what they're intended to be. The issue should never be whether we appreciate the men and women of the police department. The issue is how do we effectively manage limited financial resources in this city and get maximum effective <clears throat> use out of them? And I just see, having come from the police department, I see captains working a sergeant shift. I get an email saying, well, one of the reasons why we're spending a lot of overtime is because we had promotional exams and we had to backfill positions because so many people were off. If we have lost that degree of management control, folks, we've got a problem. They have promotional exams in the fire department. And you don't see Chief Williams coming in here and asking for all sorts of overtime. So I just think it's time to call the proverbial timeout and have all of us take a hard look at this, 
find out what <coughs> we can do so that we get maximum use out of very limited financial resources. That's all this is. And I certainly hope the public and my colleagues understand that's where I'm coming from. So I appreciate your indulgence on this issue. Any other council have questions? Council Bonds. Well, I didn't have a question. I just wanted to make my motion. I kind of put it out there in a <coughs> statement kind of form, but how, how would I actually do that? You, you can make a motion to modify. Okay. Um, well, at this time, I'd like to make a motion to um, modify number 60, the appropriation of $250,000 to overtime to the police to $150,000. Second. So motion on the floor is properly seconded to, uh, to modify it as stated by Concert at Large uh, Bonds and uh, seconded by Concert at Large Rodriguez. Uh, Mr. Clerk, if you could kindly read the roll relative to this amendment motion. Right. Azak. No. Byron. Yes. Bologna. No. Cruz. No. Ionary. No. Farwell. No. Lally. No. Lyon. No. Rodriguez. Yes. Stadinsky. No. Sullivan. No. Cruz and Truman. Causes the amendment made uh, does not prevail. Uh, thus, we go back to the fact that we're acting on the suspension of rules <coughs> on number 60, the appro appropriation request of 250000 Mr. Clerk, if you could kindly read the roll on that matter. Azak. Yes. Barnes. No. Beauregard. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Pioneer. Yes. Farwell. Yes. Lally. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. No. Sedinsky. Yes. yes. Solomon. Yes. Appropriation hereby passes, councils. Mr. Council. President. Mr. President. Oh, uh, President. <laughs> the yeah. dean. We'll go to the dean. Go dean of the dean. council. <laughs> council Yanari. I'm just going to move for reconsideration in hopes it does not prevail in the item Motion made properly. Second reconsideration. Hopes it doesn't prevail. All in favor of reconsideration. All opposed. Motion for reconsideration does not prevail. Chief, thank you. Uh, thank councils, thank we got to go back now to agenda items 7 through 10 that were postponed. And what I'm going to, I'm going to, instead of having the clerk read them, they've already been read. Is there anyone here? Uh, in the chamber for Mass Electric Company or National Grid? None. Uh, Councilors, I'm going to entertain a motion for number seven to postpone it to the next finance meeting. So move. Second. Po point motion made, properly seconded, postpone number seven to the next finance meeting. All in favor? All opposed? It carries. I'm sorry, no, the next city council meeting. I'm sorry, next city council meeting. I misspoke. Postpone to the next. We'll modify that, Councilors. Postpone to the next city council. All in favor? All opposed? Postponed. Well, I didn't know if, uh, like, they're not, they weren't all the, we can. Let's, let's, anyone here from Verizon? Anyone here from Verizon? No one's here from National Grid. No one's here from Mass Electric. Councilors, if Make we could. Make a motion to postpone 8, 9, and 10 until the next week. Second. Week. Second. Motion made properly seconded to postpone Mr. 8, Chairman, 8, 9, and to Council. Uh, Mr. President, just, just on the motion, because we're getting backed up towards the end of the year and with budgets and, and a number of other issues, are these basically, my first term in the council, are they basically routine? Or is, is there a reason why these could not be approved tonight? Yeah, I wouldn't postpone. I mean, I would, as the president, I wouldn't allow it. I've been on the council 12 years. The utility companies always appear before us. The fact that they're not here tonight, the matter should be postponed. All right, thank you. Eight, nine, and ten are postponed to the next city council meeting. All in favor? All opposed? It carries. Postponed to the next city council meeting. Thus, councils, we go back to 61 on the agenda. And I'm going to have to entertain a motion relative to that because it's attributed to the same agenda items we just postponed. So moved. 61, 62, 63. And 64. 64. Yep. Okay. And 64. Mm -hmm. Postponed uh, to the next city council. Second. Second. All in favor? All opposed? 61, 62, 63, 64 are postponed to the next city council meeting. Mr. Clerk, I believe we have a few late files. We have a communication from the building department. Requested reauthorization as revolving funds for fiscal 18 revolving demolition account. It's going to be referred to the finance committee. Communication from the mayor recommending the same. Accepted place placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. That also is accepted and placed on file. We have an order that the city council authorizes a reestablishment of a revolving fund for fiscal year 2018 for the sole purpose of helping to fund the cost in connection with the demolition of buildings in the city of Brockton. Referred to the finance committee. Uh, councilors, a couple of points of information if we could. I just want to let you know that on Friday night, uh, Council Beauregard was there. I attended a meeting at the Dover Street Art Gallery on behalf of the City Council. I uh, presented a citation to Lynn Smith. We all know Lynn. Uh, she's a real civic activist and she's done a lot. 
uh, in the city of Brockton. So I just want to let you know that I did that as your president. And then also, councillors, and it kind of piggybacks on what we just talked about relative to vetting out, mm -hmm. and making sure that the budget is appropriate. And again, remember, the city of Brockton is just a business, $440 million business for the city of Brockton. So um, we're going to be having budget hearings upcoming. Uh, Mayor Carpenter has indicated to me that the books will be received on June 2nd, which is a Friday. Thus, I'm going to call budget hearings Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, June 7, June 8, June 9. It's going to give us from the 2nd through the 7th to vet it out and research it and spend some time. Also, Councilor Large Bonds has indicated that there's a, a, a nice probability that uh, our Congressman Stephen Lynch will join us here in the chamber on Friday, June 9th, oh, when nice. we do the school budget. Uh, which is nice, and thank you for that, Councilor. Uh, so 789 will be budget, and then we'll be back on the 12th, which will be full city council, to address and hopefully ratify the budget at that time. Councilor Bonds. Uh, yes, just a moment of personal privilege, if I may. Yes, Councilor. Thank you, Mr. President. So after a year of planning and working things out and getting folks uh, <coughs> excited about serving on the Brockton's Commission on Women's Issues, we are finally going to be swearing in uh, 10 members. There were originally 11 members. Unfortunately, uh, one of the members, my friend Lizetta Johnson, she passed away um, a few weeks ago. However, she will be sworn in posthumously. Um, but there will be 10 women eager to start to serve and to address the issues of women in the city of Brockton. It's, uh, it's scheduled right now for Wednesday the 7th at around 6.30. We're still working out kind of a, a place, but it will be here in City Hall. Um, we expect the media to be there. We invite um, all the re any resident that wants to come. Um, it will be kind of like an open public meeting-ish kind of thing where you can meet the women, um, suggest some issues you'd like them to address, and, and also just to get familiar with one of your newest commissions in the city of Brockton. So I want to thank the, um, the 11 women who agreed to serve on this, thank my, count, my uh, colleagues on the council for um, allowing us to do this. I thank the mayor's office, Andrea Burton, um, and the mayor for you know, allowing this, this really huge, huge undertaking to, to go forward. So I um, just want to invite everybody to that, June 7th, 6.30. Thank you, Council. Council Farwell. Just a moment of personal privilege. Yes, sir. Uh, first, I'd like to mention the passing of Kathleen Snellgrove, uh, with whom many of us worked at the police department for many years. She was a civilian telephone operator and then worked as a clerk in the BCI, and she passed away, and uh, she was a wonderful person. So I, I would just like to acknowledge that. Uh, the other issue is the Public Safety Committee will meet at 6 p.m. Uh, prior to next week's FinCom meeting on Tuesday the 30th. So members of the Public Safety Committee hopefully will breeze through that uh, well in advance of the 7 p.m. FinCom. But uh, 6 o'clock on the 30th for Public Safety. Thank you, Council. Uh, Council Rodriguez followed by Council Azak. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I just want to remind the members of the uh, Real Estate Committee we haven't met in a while, but um, that the uh, Committee on Real Estate is calling for a meeting on June 6th. It's a Tuesday at 6 p.m. Uh, right here in the, uh, at City Hall. And I'm inviting the uh, members of the uh, committee as well as the public with regards to the meeting on uh, the Committee on Real Estate. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Azak. Thank you, Mr. President. A moment of personal privilege. Um, I would, uh, this past Saturday, I got a chance to participate as a judge with the citywide spelling bee at the Little Red Schoolhouse. And I believe, Mr. President, you did as well that afternoon. I know Mr. Rodriguez and did the, as well. Yes. It's spell a thing, but I feel fine. <laughs> it's one of my favorite events of the year, but I would like to congratulate all the um, students who participated. I believe it's grades uh, four through eight that, um, that four. Third? Third. Third. I got it this year, it was uh, the older grades that I got to judge, but congr congratulate all the um, students that participated. They did an amazing job. It's an accomplishment to make it to the spelling bee and then to all the winners. So um, best wishes to all of them, and they all did an amazing job. Thank you, Councilor. Any other questions, Councilor Cruz? Before is everybody I, all done? Before I recognize you, I just want to, again, a uh, point, point of information, Councilors. Uh, Councilor Rodriguez had invited me as the president to go to the Roseland Ballroom in Taunton recently. Um, the first Cardinal um, from Cape Verde, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Cardinal Arlindo Furtado, uh, came here. It was his first visit uh, to the United States in the Brockton area since he was ele elevated by Pope Francis in 2015. It's a wonderful night. There was at least 650 people there. And thank yes. you, Councilor, for what you did. Um, Mayor Coppola was there, and we as a city council gave the Cardinal uh, a citation. So I just wanted to give you that information. 
Anything else before us? Council, uh, Council Beauregard followed by Council Cruz. Thank you, Mr. President. A moment of personal privilege. Ms. Councilor. Okay. First of all, I have my meeting tomorrow night, Ward 5 meeting, Tuesday, May 23rd, 6.30 p.m. at the Broughton Main Library. And uh, the big discussion will be, Old Colony Planning Council will be doing a presentation on Route 123, which is Belmont Street and Center Street, and their plans, and they want your input. And this presentation is pretty important because an awful lot of people are on that street every single day. And there's also two hospitals on that street and the back of uh, the, one of the largest high schools. So there's a lot of activity, and your in, input is vital to the future. Uh, plans of uh, that um, street me and also want to commend the old colony planning council they celebrated 50 years uh, last Thursday night and uh, quite the celebration good for them but uh, you know in the contributions they've made to the streets traffic transportation and infrastructure in this community so thank, thank you, you. Councilor. any other councils council Cruz thank you mr. president I hereby move to go into executive session pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 30A, Section 21.3 to discuss strategy with respect to pending litigation involving the Brockton Powell versus City of Brockton et al. case as an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the City Council. Second. Uh, a motion has been made to go into executive session uh, pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21, Subsection 3 to discuss strategy with respect to pending litigation involving Brockton Power v. City of Brockton. Um, as an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on litigating position of the City Council. The motion has been properly seconded and this requires a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, kindly read the roll. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. 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 Council says, Chair, I hereby declare that having this discussion in open session may be detrimental to the City Council's litigating position. Thus, please note that the committee will not reconvene in open session after the executive session, but rather will adjourn at that time. Thank you, Council's Executive session, please. Well, we were done with this crap. Oh. Huh?